Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, we'll be discussing a very interesting, recently released Nigerian movie. Trust me, this is not your typical film. There's so much to learn from it. This movie offers a powerful message on how hard work and determination can propel one forward in life. So stay tuned and listen closely to this amazing story. The story begins with Victor Adams, a young, hardworking, and brilliant student nicknamed Mr. Fixer for his skill at fixing just about anything. He's a university student excelling in his studies. One day, he is fixing the electricity in his compound while neighbors cheer him on, grateful for his help. After finishing the repair, Mr. Fixer prepares to leave, but along the way, he encounters an old client, a woman who needs her pipes fixed. Although he already has another job lined up, she offers to double his fee, and he gladly accepts. On his way back, Mr. Rao, Fixer receives a call from a classmate, reminding him about their evening lecture. Grateful for the reminder, he quickly heads back to prepare. The next day, Mr. Fixer resumes his apprenticeship at a mechanic workshop. He greets his fellow apprentices, who are having breakfast, and changes into his work clothes. Soon, a car arrives, and two apprentices run to attend to the client, a woman who reports her car is jerking and overheating. The two apprentices are stumped and begin to argue about the issue, but Mr. Fixer steps in. Recognizing the woman, he greets her, listens to the problem, and quickly diagnoses it as a faulty radiator fan and worn spark plugs. Though she's disappointed she won't be able to take the car home immediately, Mr. Fixer assures her it'll be ready by the weekend. Impressed by his professionalism and fluent English, she compliments him before leaving. Meanwhile, we meet Angel, another university student struggling with a core course. She's frustrated and worried as she desperately needs a passing grade for her GPA. Her friend Sarah mentions a guy her ex-boyfriend recommended for extra tutoring. Excited and hopeful, Angel urges Sarah to contact him. Later that day, Angel's mother arrives without her car, explaining it's at the mechanics. She asks Angel to pick it up, and Angel agrees. When Angel and Sarah arrive at the shop, Mr. Rao, Fixer, is finishing the work on the car. Just as he begins to test it, Sarah insults him, calling his hands dirty and accusing him of messing up her friend's mother's car. Angel is shocked and disappointed by Sarah's rude behavior. Mr. Fixer remains calm and doesn't respond to her insults. Angel, disturbed by her friend's actions, scolds her and they leave together. That night, Mr. Fixer counts the money he earned that day but he feels disheartened, realizing he still has a long way to go to reach his savings goal. The following day, Angel and Sarah are relaxing at school. Angel asks Sarah to call the senior student recommended for tutoring, and soon after, Mr. Fixer arrives, dressed smartly and ready to greet them. Sarah is hostile, and her negative attitude frustrates Angel. Mr. Fixer apologizes and sits at a distance. Then he makes a phone call to the person he was supposed to meet, Angel and Sarah, Realizing this, Sarah and Angel are shocked. Angel, surprised to learn the mechanic guy is actually Victor Adams, the well-known brilliant tutor on campus, is also deeply disappointed by Sarah's behavior. She apologizes to Mr. Fixer and asks for private tutoring, but he declines due to his busy schedule. However, he invites her to a public tutoring session he has planned for next week. Angel pleads, explaining she doesn't live in the hostel and may not be able to attend. Mr. Fixer advises her to try her best to join the class and leaves, while Angel feels heartbroken, blaming Sarah for the lost opportunity. That evening, in his room, Mr. Fixer receives a call from a classmate informing him that their supervisor had been looking for him earlier. Mr. Fixer explains that he avoided the supervisor because he hasn't yet saved enough for his project, and he worries about getting scolded. His classmate urges him to meet with the supervisor soon, leaving Mr. Fixer feeling troubled and concerned. That night, Angel was sitting in the living room, looking sad and worried. Noticing her daughter's expression, Angel's mother asked what was troubling her. Angel confided in her about her struggles with a course at school, explaining she had even failed a recent test. Her mother, though shocked and disappointed, showed care and concern for her only daughter. Angel mentioned that her mechanic, Mr. Fixer, is the only person who could help her with extra tutoring but unfortunately, he couldn't commit to private sessions, only to public tutorials on campus. Her mother was surprised to learn that Mr. Fixer was a student at her daughter's university and was impressed. She assured Angel she would speak to him, making Angel feel happy and relieved as she thanked her mom. 
The next day, Angel's mother visited Mr. Fixer at his workplace and spoke to him in her car. She explained her daughter's need for private tutoring, but he politely declined, citing his busy schedule and the need to raise money for his project needs. Angel's mother then asked how much he needed, and he replied that it was 500,000 Naira. Surprising him, she offered to pay him 600,000 Naira if he agreed to tutor her daughter privately. Mr. Fixer was in disbelief, but after accepting the deal, she transferred 300,000 Naira to him on the spot. His eyes widened with joy, and he thanked her profusely as she drove off. That evening, Angel's mother returned home and shared the good news, letting her know she had convinced Mr. Fixer to tutor her privately. She told Angel to be ready at 6 p.m. the next day, leaving Angel excited and grateful as she hugged her mom. The next day, Mr. Fixer began the tutoring session at Angel's house, teaching both her and her friend Sarah. Angel was focused and attentive, but Sarah, who held a grudge against Mr. Fixer, was distracted and spent most of the session on her phone. When corrected, she refused to change her behavior, unwilling to humble herself enough to learn from him. Angel and Mr. Fixer let her be and continued the lesson without her. The following day after school, Angel happily shared with Sarah that she was beginning to understand the course much better thanks to Mr. Fixer's tutoring. Unfortunately, Sarah still wasn't grasping the material, blaming Mr. Fixer's teaching skills, which saddened Angel as they walked home. Another day, while busy at the workshop, Mr. Fixer forgot about his tutoring session until Angel called to remind him. He hurried over to Angel's house, still in his mechanic's clothes, and Sarah grew impatient while waiting. Upon seeing him, she insulted his appearance, calling him dirty, but Angel rebuked her and showed Mr. Fixer where to change. After he left, Sarah resumed making demeaning comments about him, calling him a common mechanic and saying he wasn't up to their standards. Frustrated with her friend's prideful attitude, Angel chastised Sarah and urged her to change, which made Sarah tone down her insults. The lesson began, and as usual, Angel was attentive while Sarah remained disengaged, disrupting the class and angering Angel. After the lesson, Angel confronted Sarah, warning that if she continued with this behavior, it would end their friendship. Feeling hurt and humiliated, Sarah lashed out, accusing Angel of taking Mr. Fixer's side and saying Angel should remember her mother had helped pay her school fees the previous semester. Sarah left, ending their friendship, and Angel was left feeling helpless. That night, Mr. Fixer received a call from a classmate, reminding him to pay his remaining balance for the project, which worried him even more. The next morning, Angel offered to help her mom in the kitchen, but her mother encouraged her to go study instead. When her mom asked how her lessons with Victor, Mr. Fixer, were going, Angel replied, they were helpful. Her mother noticed Sarah hadn't been around lately, but Angel avoided explaining the reason, leaving her mom curious. A few days later at school, Mr. Fixer was surrounded by students seeking his help with tutoring, feeling overwhelmed. Sarah, meanwhile, ignored Angel, walking past her without a word, which saddened Angel. Mr. Fixer, noticing Angel's distress, cheered her up, and she invited him to go home together in her car. They managed to escape the crowd and had a fun experience running from his eager classmates. Later that day, during their tutoring session, Mr. Fixer gave Angel a test, and she performed well, making both of them proud. As he was leaving, he received another call from his classmate about the project fees. Angel overheard the conversation, and though he assured her everything was fine, she could tell he was struggling. That night, Angel approached her mom, who was working in the living room, and asked for a loan of 150,000 Naira to help Mr. Fixer. Her mother, recalling Mr. Fixer's struggle, decided to cover his remaining balance of 300,000 Naira. Angel was overjoyed and thanked her mom. Meanwhile, Mr. Fixer was in his room, calling old clients in hopes of finding extra work, but had no luck, leaving him feeling defeated. The next morning, he woke to a surprise, a credit alert of 300,000 Naira. Overwhelmed with joy, he could hardly believe it. Later that day, Mr. Fixer visited Angel's house to express his gratitude. Kneeling before her mother, he thanked her, and she reminded him she was happy to help. She also promised an additional 300,000 Naira once her daughter successfully completed her studies, leaving him grateful. Soon after, 
Angel faced her final test in the course. Mr. Fixer called to wish her success, and Angel was filled with gratitude and confidence, determined to pass her test with flying colors. Hours after the exam, Angel was ecstatic as she called her mother to share the news. She had passed the most difficult course in her program. Her mother was overjoyed and proud, suggesting Angel call Mr. Fixer to tell him the good news and invite him to dinner. Angel, however, chose to visit him at his workshop, leaving her mother both relieved and happy. Meanwhile, at Mr. Fixer's workplace, Sarah was unexpectedly there, pleading with him to help her cheat on her exams, even offering to pay or repay him in kind. Disgusted by her words, Mr. Fixer firmly rejected her offer, warning her never to suggest anything like that again and sending her away. That evening, Angel seemed downcast at dinner with her mother. Concerned, her mother asked what was wrong, but Angel insisted she was fine. When her mother asked about Mr. Fixer and why he hadn't joined them for dinner, Angel lied, saying she hadn't seen him at the workshop, which left her mother disappointed. The next morning, Mr. Fixer visited Angel's house, surprised to meet her mother. She asked why he hadn't joined them for dinner and why he hadn't been at the workshop when her daughter came looking for him. Surprised, Mr. Fixer assured her he had been there all day and that they must have just missed each other. Relieved, she directed him to Angel's room. Later, during his lesson with Angel in the living room, Mr. Fixer noticed she seemed upset and distracted. When he asked what was wrong and why she had lied about not finding him at the workshop, Angel confessed that she had seen him with Sarah and assumed they were flirting, so she left to give them privacy. Amused, Mr. Fixer explained that Sarah had come to him, trying to bribe him to help her cheat on her exams, and he had rejected her. Angel was shocked at her friend's actions but felt reassured, refocusing on the lesson. The next day after lectures, Victor, Mr. Fixer, waited for Angel so they could head home together. They walked hand in hand, laughing, unaware that Sarah was watching them, filled with regret and frustration. Later, feeling remorseful, Sarah visited Angel and her mother to apologize, promising never to repeat her mistakes. Angel's mother, though expressing her disappointment, eventually forgave her, but firmly told Sarah she no longer wanted her around her daughter, citing her negative influence. Sarah was devastated but left after pleading unsuccessfully, leaving Angel torn. Afterward, Angel tried to persuade her mother to reconsider, but her mother remained resolute, explaining she overheard Mr. Fixer's account of Sarah's actions and felt compelled to protect her daughter. That night, Mr. Fixer called Angel to share his excitement about his upcoming final exams and graduation. Angel was thrilled for him, wishing him success before they said goodnight. The next day, after Mr. Fixer signed out from his final exams, he was met with a surprise celebration from Angel and her mother. They had decorated the house with congratulatory banners, set up a table with wine, and even had a cake. Overwhelmed with emotion, Mr. Fixer was deeply touched thanking them with tears of joy as they celebrated together. Later, Angel accompanied Mr. Fixer back to his workshop, where his colleagues threw him another surprise party, complete with singing, dancing, and beer showers, leaving him filled with gratitude and happiness. That night, he called Angel to express his heartfelt thanks. She asked him to share more about himself, and he revealed his challenging life story, how he lost his parents in a car crash as a child, was taken in by an uncle who stopped supporting him at 13 and had to fend for himself from then on. Angel was amazed at his resilience and felt proud of all he had achieved. The next day, Mr. Fixer helped with a repair at Angel's house, and afterward, they chatted about his future plans. He shared his goal of saving up for his MBA and developing a mobile app for artists, which impressed Angel greatly. Unbeknownst to them, her mother was nearby, listening and equally impressed. At dinner that night, Angel's mother asked where Mr. Tiger Fixer would be posted for his National Youth Service, and he answered Port Harcourt. Angel was saddened that he would be far away, but he reassured her they would stay in touch, easing her worries. Angel's mother generously offered him money to help with his move, and he gratefully accepted. Days later, Mr. Fixer completed his apprenticeship with a celebration led by his boss and colleagues, who honored him with blessings and heartfelt well wishes. The following day, Angel accompanied Mr. Fixer to see him off for his service. 
As they said goodbye, neighbors teased them about how well they looked together, which they brushed off with smiles. That night, Mr. Fixer video called Angel from his youth camp, and they enjoyed a light-hearted conversation, laughing and catching up. The next day, Angel's mother found her daughter deep in thought in the kitchen. When she teased her about missing Victor, Angel denied it, explaining she was focused on her upcoming final exams. Her mother expressed pride that her daughter would be graduating soon. Months later, Angel finally signed out from school, celebrating alongside her classmates. Amid the excitement, she noticed Sarah, who looked regretful and isolated. Sarah approached Angel to apologize once more, admitting to her mistakes and the unfortunate outcome of her failed exams. Moved by her friend's sincerity, Angel allowed Sarah to sign her shirt, bringing a smile to Sarah's face. Back at home, Angel's mother surprised her by inviting Mr. Fixer over to celebrate her graduation. Overjoyed, Angel ran to hug him, making her mother proud and fulfilled. Mr. Fixer was delighted to see her succeed, knowing his tutoring had made a real difference. Later that evening, Mr. Fixer took Angel on a romantic dinner date to celebrate her success. As they enjoyed their meal, he spoke of his work and aspirations, making her proud of him. He then mustered the courage to ask her to be his girlfriend. She was taken aback but thrilled, accepting with a smile. They toasted to their new relationship. So what did you learn from this story? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more exciting Nigerian movie updates. See you next time.